much sure. So when you submit the, this map video job, the in the naming node there is a job tracker. So it's a main is kind of master process. It's a job for each job that you are going to submit. Job tracker. It's not sure. It's not familiar. It's something different. I will correct if I'm wrong. Okay. So job tracker is running per the your the application program. Okay, then for each node where the data node data block is located and the test tracker will be running. One, two, three. They are in charge of the each mapper. Okay? They are each of them is in charge of the one data the block one. This one is in charge of the block the this node. Then the for the reducer test tracker will combine. They will inform to here. This one inform to here. And this one inform to here. The finally the reducer will combine all of this values. So finally A can the, the 20 and the 1 output will be saved as the 5. So there is a job tracker. Job tracker and the test tracker is running. And also, in addition to that, the naming node is the also there exists the process that are in charge of the all of this thing. So this is also the process name. Naming node is a process name, job tracker is a process name, and the test tracker is a process name, and data node is the process name. So such a process are called a demo process and they are running each process has the each Java virtual the machine, JVM. Okay? So for example here the data in the memory, there is the task, uh, the tracker, and the data node. If you submit the multiple job, then another job tracker is running and then task tracker. Sometimes it can be multiple task tracker will be created based on the your resource. If you have the enough resource, it will allocate the more than that. So which is called the scheduling. So we will see the uh, different types of scheduling in the uh, semester. The day because uh, it is possible to submit the multiple job. So some of the job is uh, easily done, but uh, takes a long time. So the each the data node is scheduled for the test tracker. Okay. So this is uh, how it works uh, on the an architecture and how it works. Also, another thing is the test record. In the test record, this one takes off. The others are mostly done, but this test record is very slow. So naming node check the from time, periodically check the how much progress <coughs> of the, to process the job. If one of them, some of the node is slow, then ask another load where the that has a zero. And this one ask to the data node to run the same job as this. Then the C. Which one is the faster? So if this one catch up and the much faster, stop the this job. Okay? Then the keep the uh, faster one. This is called the speculation. So another characteristic of them. Uh, head up is uh, it supports the uh, job speculation. Is compete then the select the faster one. Okay, so this and also all of them are the Java. So which means the, the we are going to use the RPC for the communication. And also in the Java, if you are familiar with the Java, so sometimes we can. This is a distributed job. Okay, this will be the Java application. We need to communicate at the time the, we can use the, some of the Java, the, the functionality for the communication. We will see some of the example. However, nowadays, what if I do not know the Java? Can I use the Python for that uh, same program? So we cannot use it directly, but there is a wrapper to support. The inside is run, the Java application is running, but the outside you can use the other program interface is the 
Hadoop Streaming. I think the Hadoop Streaming service. So you can use the other program language to wrap up the, the Java application. We will uh, see the, such an example later. Okay, so that is the over, overall the architecture of the uh, Hadoop, except the Yarn. So I'm going to explain after the go over the slide. Okay, so Hadoop is running, as I mentioned, it's running on the existing file system. Let's see the, this one, other file system. But uh, in terms of architecture, it's almost the same as the GFS. On your, so that is the reason that I assigned the reading assignment for the first uh, reading assignment for the read uh, GFS. In your reading assignment, the main purpose is uh, as much as possible understanding the content. Then the one or two pages summary, we, the, we do your own work. It's not just copy and paste the title or the, some the Wikipedia. Just we do your own work, uh, summarize what is a GFS, what is a characteristic, how you can uh, improve. Because it's a 10, what, longer than 10 years ago, the paper. There are a lot of things uh, that you can uh, imagine. Some of them are already uh, addressed, but uh, if you have an idea to how to enhance such a GFS, so you can uh, add up. Then the summit. In terms of format, uh, did I specify the specific format? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, not the, like the 14, the 16, the font size and a lot of the copy and paste of the figure, okay? So, but I need your own the summary understanding of the, uh, the reading assignment by the Friday. And uh, there's no penalty by the end of the weekend, but uh, try to uh, keep the uh, due date. Any question for the reading assignment? Yes. That's the secondary naming node from other daemon process? Oh, no, this one? The secondary naming node? Yes, so that run the, also the uh, daemon process on that node, but I erased that. Okay? What exactly is that daemon process? Okay, so what is the daemon process? It's a process. And how is it different from normal process? So that's my question. <laughs> if you already took the operating system class, you should know. Okay, so what is the difference between the daemon and the normal process? The daemon no? process is run, uh, running in the background and they are always active even if the uh, like client is not there. Okay. So it is always waiting for the resource to mm -hmm. uh, give the information or like uh, waiting for the resources. It's basically always active in the system. Yeah. Whereas the normal process can, it's uh, generated by the client and it can be shut down at any point of time if the process has been completed. Okay, so 90% correct. That's a very good answer. What is this? It's a process tree, okay? Any operating system uses a process tree, which means that actually the 90% of the main function of the operating system is the creating process. If you think about the how, what happens when you log on the, your the operating system? It creates a new process. What if the, you run the double click, the, any the program, what happens? Creating process. What happens when you turn on your the computer? <coughs> creating a lot of processes. So actually creating process is the one of the main primary job of your operating system. Then that operating system uses the tree structure, which means the starting from the <laughs> first process, which is called the <laughs> kernel. Then kernel create, mostly create what? System process, like the swap, network, what is something important. So somebody consider all of this as the operating system. Somebody consider only the kernel as the operating system. But it's not critical, but uh, anyway. Then the, this process will create the, this one, process the, this, and then finally you can the, have the, your interface, the process, like the shell, or the desktop. So because it's the end of the process tree, sometimes it's called a terminal. That is the reason when you are using Mac OS or the Unix or Linux system, 
Why don't you open the terminal? What does that mean? Terminal means that this end of process, your interface. So command line interface, or sometimes graphical user interface, which means parent and child, parent and child. Any process should have the parent process except the kernel. So because of that, the kernel is called a kind of virtual machine. So you can just image copy when you start the first processor. And then except the kernel, all the other process should be created by their parent. Which means, so, hook and exec and wait. These three system libraries are the main when you create the process. So what is the hook, what is the exe, what is the wait? Hook, just copy, clone. Clone one, on the memory. All of these are actually on the memory. Okay, this is in the memory, this is in the memory, this is in the memory. Process means the memory data structure. Okay, then, so when you fork, it's a exactly copy, make the clone of your parent. During the EXAC, load its own instruction code, programming code. Okay, so it will be separated after that. There are more the details, right? The copy or write and whatever, but just uh, the root, and it will be separated. But still, parent and child. And the wait means this parent will not do anything, just wait until the child process is done. Okay? So that is the wait. That is the reason when you run the program, like the command line, when you Enter and running the program, you cannot do anything because parent is wait until the child is done. Also, if your the exit your file your application program, so this is an application program. But if you exit this one, what happened? Cascadely terminated, right? Because the parent is died, the their the descendant will be died. So this is the nature of the process tree. Okay, that is a reason if kernel is something happen or the other will be the, your crash. Your operating system should be restarted like that. Then I try to run the data node, the demo here or naming node. Then so I start the head. So data node, the demo is running, but I want to log up. If you log out, what happened? This will be stop. So you can you should be always 24 hours the the logo, which is not fair. So at that time, if you wanna make the service program like the keep running, even though I log out, parent is log out, at that time you can give the parentship to the kernel, which is the process ID one. So if you make the process ID, parent process ID is one, then this is what is called demon process. It's a service program. So even though you log out after you start, you're still running the this the processes. So that is the demon process. There are similar things in the operating system. Zombie. What is a zombie process? Zombie means ghost. It's not really exist, right? When you terminate, so this process is done, okay? Then terminate, which means terminate, when a process is terminated, most important thing is return your resource, the free. And also finally, the last step is the, you need to clear the process tree, a process tree, a process table. Okay, in the operating system. Just before to clear the, your process table, I clean up the memory. So which means there is no existing, but in the process tree, there is the name of the process. Then at some real bit, the moment, okay, it's a zombie. Name is there, but it's not really exist. So that is called the zombie process. Mostly zombie doesn't affect the performance. However, sometimes, Open process. Open process means there is no parent process, but 
there exists the child process. There's something wrong. Why? This one keep the memory space research. Mostly it's running uh, without any the meaningful the output. Without any meaningful the information. So it's a always the waste of your research you need to clean up such so a all process. Okay? That is a different normal, demon, zombie, and the open process. You should know at least if you uh, took the operating system class. So that is the demon process. So they are communicating through the IPC, the protocol, and so on. So just in time. Okay, so we see. Oh, yes. Okay, so mostly it's the right ones. So uh, HDFS is the right ones. Okay, it's not the random read. Okay, for the random read, the we will use the other the data store like the HBase or other the NoSQL database. So this one shows the from the client side we need to upload to the HDFS. So mostly they have the three copies and the large, the block size, okay? Then the naming node keep the all the such a metadata. Okay, so one block will be copied one and the two and the three like that this. Okay. Then the, it's uh, shows the how to read the data. So when you read the, uh, this is a story and retrieving the data, I already explained. So naming node has all the metadata information, basically two parts, how many blocks and the where is the block. Okay? So when the read the data and naming node is the keep the uh, info, uh, the location of the node the, where the block is located based on the performance, considering the performance. Okay? So naming node is the uh, naming node demon should be running all the time. It's a single point of failure because of that we have the standby naming node. There is a secondary the naming node, early version, but this one is not the standby, is that this is the supporting to reduce the overhead of the naming node. Okay. Then the how to access the HDFS. So we can use uh, HDFS the shell and DFS shell. So we will practice this one or other application like the Spark and the Java API. The we will practice the map we use, then the school and the flow or the less for API we can use. I'm going to skip this one. We will practice later. Okay. The yeah, which I missed. I think that this will be the last one. Uh, we will have a time uh, during the map reduce, but uh, before that, briefly introduce. This is not the so when the when we see the first when so when the yarn was released the first time, somebody uh, consider yarn is the upgrade version of the map reduce. No, is that this is a resource management. The main problem of the map reduce is, as you can see, the job tracker is not in charge of the resource. Instead. The task manager, other demon process. This is the master of the task tracker, other demon process for to that uh, process the data. Okay, not resource. So we need uh, something other. Because of this, the, the number of nodes that the each job process is a huge the limitation. It can be several hundred nodes. Some of the application need the thousand node, but no way. So this is too much job for this. Instead, the the next version the, of the head of to the provide the resource manager. It's monitoring and the manage the resource of the other data node, which is called the yarn, the yet another resource negotiator. So it's a negotiator. Okay, so it's a resource manager and also a scheduler for the several multiple jobs, which means using YARN, you can submit the, your map reduce program. Then the resource will be the balance. You can submit the job without YARN. So in our practice, actually, the, we are not going to use the YARN. Instead, we will use the, just without YARN, the old traditional way. The, 
of the uh, uh, MapBGIS program. Okay. So YAN can be supported by the other the Hadoop application, such as a Spark and the Impala and the MapBGIS. Okay. So it has the first uh, the application master. This is the, the, uh, the manager. So when you submit the job, application master will be created in the one of the node, the one of the node, the naming node assigned, either resource manager is assigned, then the, this one will, this one, uh, this one will create the test, the tracker which is the same as the, this one demo process, then they will, this application, the master will communicate with the other test tracker, then the, in addition to the processing job, uh, the test track, uh, the application manager will consider the research of it. So it will the, uh, the consider the overall performance of the node, then for better performance. Then the if the job is done, the application master return to the resource manager. So resource manager itself is another component, another component of the head. So nowadays it is saying that there are three main components, the head distributed file system, and the map reduce plus the resource manager. Professor, uh, yes. the metadata for the jobs, where is it stored? Metadata of the are. job yes. is in the naming code. In the job resource server. manager or, or uh, just in the... When you're using the resource manager, then the resource manager... The, actually, the resource manager uh, starts by the, for the metadata information of the data node getting from the naming node. Then the application master is created, then the communicate with the naming node, get the which node is has the data node. Mm. Then the create the test node for where the uh, data block is uh, located, then the create it and the communicate with the resource manager regarding to the resource. Huh. That can be monitored by the as an interface. We have the hue, but the, we will use the other the uh, the web application the, to see the how much it works. And there's a command line, the log, and also uh, there's uh, the uh, the web application. There's a, a web UI in case of the yarn. Okay. okay. So that's it. And uh, question. Do the data nodes uh, communicate with each other? The data nodes, they communicate with each other? No. They do not communicate with each other. Instead, the uh, job tracker is the communicate for each the test tracker. The data node one cannot communicate with other nodes. So this one, they communicate directly, this one, no. They do not communicate. They each one has the managed by the test tracker. And test maker is communicating with the, in case of YAN, the application manager, otherwise the job tracker. Okay? Mm -hmm. so is there any instance that they need to communicate with each other? Is there any scenario that they need to communicate? No, they do not communicate. It will be very complicated. It's the N square. Right? So if they need to communicate with each other, it will be N square. It will be more complicated. Okay? Okay, so. Next class, we will have the first exercise lab regarding to the uh, HDFS and the, uh, uh, the DFS. So we will upload and download and uh, so on. So, a bridge, uh, it will take a time to download the virtual machine. So you can use uh, the virtual dog or the VM player. But I strongly suggest to use the VM player, that works better. The, but uh, if you are using macOS, macOS, I, I'm not sure whether VM player is uh, supported. The virtual dog is more popular in the Mac OS. So please test it before you come. Okay? So it says it needs at least the four gigabyte. Okay? I think the four gigabyte, right? Uh, so around the four I gigabyte. Think. And uh, it has to be 64 bit, I think. Yeah, 64 bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is uh, nowadays most of the uh, laptop is a 64 bit. So please, uh, before you come, so download the virtual machine and uh, the test whether you can start uh, your virtual machine. The first one, there are two virtual machines. The first one, 
the, that, that actually, the, I will explain the next slide. The, that includes all of this in one node, which is not recommended. But uh, for practice purpose, that we did uh, in the lab using the 4-5 the computer that we set up the uh, such uh, the one naming node and the data node. So it's so more practical, but uh, it's uh, really painful. It takes a time, and uh, some of them are not working. The sometimes work. So, but uh, once uh, you understand uh, such uh, the configuration, we put the all the demo and the everything in one the node. We pretend the uh, the such uh, the cluster system. Okay. So please the uh, download and uh, uh, test uh, your virtual machine. Then the next week, uh, you can start the. Uh, Practice for the this the first, then the, I will continue to the uh, uh, lecture regarding to the map. Any questions? Don't forget to submit the uh, the reading assignment. And uh, next week I will explain the more details about the project. What you guys need to do? Okay. Thank you, and uh, see you next week.